you on assignment. You part of the rebellion. We surrounded, we on enemy territory, but you are a double agent. You in it, but not of it. You got to give them, and the weapons of our warfare are not caught on. They are mighty through God to the tearing down a stronghold. So that one scripture, that one prayer, that one move of God that you do will change their life forever if you knew the power that you will as a believer. We're going to pray and get started. Hallelujah. We uh, got a lot to talk about this morning. Amen. And, and we got a lot to pray about. Amen. We, we pierced the veil last week and went into the spiritual, into the heavens. Amen. And we talked about the prince. Amen. And uh, we riled up some things in the heavenlies. Amen. We burned him up last week. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know if anybody can feel the spiritual tension. Amen. But we burned him up last week. Amen. One thing a snake don't like is to be seen. One thing a serpent don't like is to be seen. And so, hallelujah, let me pray a hedge of protection on you right now, a blood covering on you right now, so that the weapons that the enemy form against you are not going to prosper. Amen. We burn him up. We burn him up. We burn him up. And that's how you can always know when you're on the right track. If you preach something or you part of a service, amen, where it reveals him and he began to kind of try to shake you up and stuff like that, you say, oh, I done touched the spot. I done pushed the button. Amen. Anybody hear me up in here? So let's go ahead and lift up the Most High. Most High God, we thank you so much for giving men, Lord God, your word, for giving wisdom, Lord God, for giving understanding. We thank you for showing us, O oh King, a, a, a peek, a glimpse into the heavenlies, into the spiritual. We thank you for showing us the prince, Father God. And we just pray understanding that he is, uh, he is vengeful, retaliatory. And so we just pray a hedge of protection around your people, a blood covering, God. We pray that all retaliation, all revenge would cease right now in the name of Jesus. Any problems that popped up during the week, God, that you would show them for what they really are, just clouds, just fog, just bits of nothing, God, that all arguments would cease, God, all problems and, and, and situations would dispel right now, God. God, we pray right now, God, as the enemy coming like a flood, God, that you'd lift up a standard against him right now around your people, God. We pray you send Michael, our archangel, God, to fight that prince one more time, Lord God, to cast him out of our lives one more time, God. We not only ask for Michael, but we ask for his whole battalion, God. Other angels with him, Lord God. God, in the name of Jesus, we wage spiritual warfare for your people, God. Bring us together, God. Make us one, Lord God. Bind the enemy out, Lord God. What he meant for bad, work it for our good, Lord God. We pray for financial breakthrough, prosperity, healing, Father God. Hundredfold blessing upon your people, God. God, in the name of Yahshua, Lord God. We pray you protect, bless your people, God. You said when we resist the devil that he has to flee. So now on one accord, your people, we resist every advance, every single distraction and deterrence, God. We resist it now. Believe it, it has to flee and retreat away from our life. Do it now, Yahshua. Do it now, Yahweh. Do it now, Elohim. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen, amen, and amen. Come on, give him a shout of praise. <laughs> Thank you, Lord God. Hallelujah. You should have prayed that before we left last time, amen. I knew better than that, amen. Hallelujah. You can't, you can't lift a rock and see a snake and not get any type of retaliation, amen. And, uh, and we're going to go in again today, amen. And um, we're going to continue that series and, and talk a little bit. And so if last week was piercing the veil and looking in the heavens, amen, this week is going to be taking the red pill. That's what we're going to be doing. Amen. We're going to take the red pill this week. Amen. And for those that don't know, I'm, I'm, I'm borrowing that from the movie The Matrix. All right. Where they were living in a totally different world that they had imagined. And, and uh, I forget his name. I think it's Fish, Fishburne, Lawrence Fishburne, uh, gave Keen, Keanu Reeves a red pill. He said, he said you ready? You want to take, take this? And, and you got to be ready to take this red pill. Because everything you see 
huh, is not really what it appears to be. <laughs> so when they took the red pill, huh, their eyes were open. All right. Today in this service, right here in this building, we're going to take a red pill. Woo! And the color is not insignificant because the red is for the blood of Jesus. <laughs> all right, all right. And, and, and we're going to take that red pill soaked in the blood of Jesus, and our eyes are going to be open huh, to a matrix, to a system, to a world huh, that, that most of us has nev have never really seen before. And we're going to go into the depths of that just like we went into the depths of the prince. I hope you're ready. Put your seatbelt on. Come on. Put your seatbelt on. Amen. Hallelujah. Look at your neighbor and say, are you ready for your red pill? Come on, give God some glory. Amen. <laughs> Woo! All right. Here we go. Here we go. We'll be coming from John's gospel, uh, chapter 14, verse 30, going in again. And uh, Brent, I hope you have everything that, that we sent. Amen. I didn't correspond with you back again, but I hope you have everything that, that you have. If not, we're just going to work with it, you know. I sent it to you last night, probably about 1-ish, one 1 o'clock in the morning. <laughs> well, but if you don't, just let me know, man, you know. But here we go. Um, John 14 and, and 30. Um, Jesus says this. He says, hereafter... I will not talk much with you, for the prince of this world cometh and had nothing in me. Father, in the name of Jesus, bless your word, the reading, the hearing, the exposition of it. Fill us up with a spirit of revelation, illumination, wisdom, knowledge, skill, understanding. Bless us, O King, to get everything we need and more from this word, where my oratory and elocution skills lack you make up what I'm lacking where my knowledge my understanding lack you be the X factor we can only receive from heaven that which comes from you so open us up a portal let for this moment heaven come down and touch earth let for this moment God your will be done on earth as it is in heaven, we pray for Jacob's ladder in this place. Angels ascending and descending in this moment. Bless us, O King. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Last time we were here, y'all, we went into just one part of this particular verse. We talked about the prince. And we saw last time that Jesus was leaving and he told them that he wasn't going to leave them comfortless. He told them that he was going to come and, and bring them peace. Uh, he told us to love one another. And he says, I'm going to the Father. He says, but listen, from this moment on, I won't talk too much to you. I'm not going to be able to reveal everything like I was revealing. So the conversation is going to be a little bit different. And Jesus says, why? He says, the prince is coming. And so we talked about the prince. We saw this Greek word, archon. It meant a chief ruler, a leader. But it wasn't a chief ruler and a leader on the good side. It was the other side. And we talked about Satan. We talked about Lucifer. We talked about Halal or, or Halal, uh, or his, his archaic Hebrew, Hebraic angelic name in the heavens. Amen. And we talked about him being the anointed cherub. The one who was, as though it were on the Ark of the Covenant, one of the angels, the anointed cherub that covers. The one that was in the throne room, heard all the ideas, heard all the plans. The one who was there, who was built to worship the Most High until iniquity was found in him. God saw that he no longer wanted to worship, but he wanted the worship. He wasn't satisfied being part of God's team. He wanted to be the man of the hour himself. And so the Bible says iniquity was found in him. And the particular specific iniquity was sin and the sin of pride. And so he was cast down. But before he was cast down, we know that misery loves company. So he drew a third. 
It's one thing to leave. Go ahead and leave. But why you got to try to take with you? That's a devilish, demonic thing. And you got to recognize it when you see it. You see what I'm saying? So he took a third with him. And when he took a third with him, the Bible says there was war in heaven. Because he wouldn't go quietly. Why you wouldn't go quietly? None of this is yours. You ain't built none of it. It belongs to God. Why would you want to? What, what you doing? But he wanted to take heaven. And he ain't never stopped wanting to take heaven. To this very day, heaven is on his Luciferian mind. But there was war in heaven. And so God's son is born. Anybody remember his name? Yeah, he sent Michael. Michael was the one. Michael was on site, baby. Michael said, I knew that Negro wasn't right. Michael rolled up there with his angels. They drew a line and they said, what y'all want to do about this? <laughs> Michael said, what's happening? You know how we get buck, huh? We start moving around, get the blood going. You know what I'm talking about, Renata Gale? You know how we do it. Woo, Youngsville in the house. Let it be. You know what I'm saying? And so Michael, Michael and his angels fought with Lucifer and his angels. Lucifer was a higher order than Michael. But Michael still won. Because if God be for you, who can be against you? Anybody hear me up there? So Satan was cast down. And Jesus said he was there. Huh? Before Abraham was, I am. Jesus said, I beheld Satan fall as lightning to the earth. And he fell, and his angels fell, and, and he began his base on earth, building chaos wherever he was, all right? But God said, mm, this battle ain't over. You ain't going to come on my territory and try to shake things up, take a third of my angels. God said, nah, we coming to get you where you're at. Because not only is heaven mine, God said, the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. Woo, you think you think you had that ain't yours, that's mine. And so God began a mission on earth. He began to create. Huh? Huh? The earth was without form and void, and the darkness was on the face of the deep. But the Spirit of God brewed over the earth. And God said, Let there be light, let there be firmament. Let there be seas, let there be land, let there be animals. God began to create and make order out of Satan's chaos. And then he gave man dominion. And when he gave man dominion on earth, man had dominion not over only all the animals and the birds, but over Satan himself. He gave him dominion over everything that was on earth. There was a new sheriff in town. And Satan, the trickster, was angry. So he deceived man to sin against God just like he did so that man would fall. And when man fell, he lost his dominion, and Satan gained the dominion right back. That's why he's called the prince of this world. And I want to tell you, God wasn't done with Satan. Huh? He might have lost that particular skirmish, but the battle in the war is the Lord's. Anybody hear me up in here? Woo! And I want to tell you as we're about to go into this, as Chancey was singing up there, she was singing, heaven come down yes. all right see right now the prince has this thing on lockdown we are about to learn that this world is his for right now in this era but god is raising up a resistance a rebellion huh because on earth which belongs to the enemy we're going to show you for a second there are pockets of resistance Pockets of praise, pockets of worship this morning. In an earth that's supposed to be satanic, God still has his people here. And we still praise him. We still worship him. We still sing in King Jesus. You're the name we lifted high. Your glory shaking up the earth and sky revival. We want to see your kingdom here. We don't want the prince to rule over us. We want to see your kingdom here. And you are part of a resistance. A rebellion on earth. You are behind enemy lines and we are surrounded. But God is with us. God is with us. His rebellion failed in heaven. But our rebellion will succeed on earth. Anybody hear me up in here? Woo! Our God is a champion, y'all. 
Satan lost in heaven, hallelujah, and he's going to lose in earth too, lose on earth too. I'm telling you, our God is a champion. Somebody give him some praise and glory in this house. We are behind enemy lines, but the rebellion and the resistance shall be successful, you see, because we are rebelling against evil in the name of our God. So let's talk about the world for a second. In John 14, 30, the Bible reads clearly. It tells us, hereafter I will not talk much with you, for the prince, watch this, of this world cometh and had nothing in me. The word right here for world is cosmos. Cosmos. Say that with me. Cosmos. All right? And this word world is a very deep theological word. When we was in seminary, man, we could just, we could stay for weeks on this word right here, cosmos, because it's, it's, it's amazing. It's, it's so deep. And I'm going to try my best to share with you, and I may go over some things over and over again, but it's important. It's part of the red pill. It's, you have to see what we're talking about when we say cosmos, all right? When we say world, let's begin, it's describing the whole mass of men and women who are alienated from God, all right? When we say cosmos, when we say world, we don't mean the mountains, the trees, the lakes and the ponds. We're not talking about that. We're talking about lost men and women, all right, huh? who are alienated from God, but not only alienated from God, they are hostile to God, huh? Because this is the judgment of the world that light had come into the world, but men preferred darkness instead of light. They put their eyes over and say, turn that light off. I don't want that. Turn that righteousness off. Turn that holiness off. Turn that Jesus off. Turn that God off. Turn that Bible off. Turn that church off. Turn that sermon off. Turn that gospel off. You see? It, it, it's, a, it's a system. It's, it's a mass of men and women who are alienated from God and hostile to God and his cause. That's the world. That's what we're talking about. It's a group of people huh, that's hostile to God. But it describes also a system, all right? It's the system of these lost men and women. Because they lost, right? They don't know God, and they hostile to God, and they think, and they say, man, how are we going to run this world? So they develop a system on how to run the world. Now, they lost, and a clean thing can't come from an unclean thing. And they hate God, so they ain't going to produce a system that love God. And so these lost men and women that's hostile towards God give birth to a system that is anti-God. Are you feeling me up in here? And they created it with the help of Satan to run the world. Because this system that I'm going to describe to you as we take this red pill, it rules and runs everything in this earth. And it, 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 it um, oh God, it predates men, huh? And after men are gone, it continues. It's bigger than one man is what I'm saying. It's not a political agenda. It's not one man's platform. This thing was here before Rockefeller and is after Rockefeller. It was here before Gates and is after Gates. It's a system ran by lost men but empowered by demonic influence. Anybody hear me up in here? Woo! Come on, Lafayette. Can y'all swim with me this morning? We're going back to systematic theology up in here. We're having, we having college courses up in here. Come on, can I educate you on what the world is, what the cosmos is? All right, all right. We talk about the cosmos, all right? And the system, huh, created by lost men to perpetuate their hostility against God, huh? This system uses riches. Pleasures, positions, seductions to seduce men to leave the most high. The system pulls you, huh? using all kind of tricks and traits to pull you from the most high. If you ever read the book Pilgrim's Progress by John Bunyan, he had a place in his, his book, in his metaphorical book. Because the book is about the Christian journey, but he's doing it as a walk. All right? Well, on the walk, they get to a place called Vanity Fair, 
When they get to Vanity Fair, it's got all the lights, it's got all the trinkets, it's got everything your flesh would desire. Yes. And it's put there to stop you from continuing your walk. Because our walk is to Zion. Our walk is to the celestial city. Our walk is get to our king. But there's something placed on our journey to distract us. And we see lights and we see Ferris wheels. And we see diamonds and rubies. And we see men and we see women. And we see cars and we see clothes. And none of those things are wrong within themselves. Those things are immoral. But the world uses those things to pull you away from God. They trick you and seduce you and say you can't have God and be blessed. When God is saying, listen, you just stay with me and I'm going to give you everything that vanity promised. Because if you seek first the kingdom of heaven, then all these things are going to be added to you. So vanity fair promise you things that God going to give you already. You see? But it's the world. It's the world. It's the world. And when Jesus was here on earth, he was seduced by the world as well. By Satan himself. The prince himself made a personal appearance to the king of kings and the prince of peace. And took him up on a high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world. And say, I will give you all of these things if you will bow down and worship me. The fact of the matter is, the kingdoms were his anyway. Hey, God! <laughs> Satan can't give you nothing that's not already yours. The Vanity Fair is a trick. It's emptiness. It's promising you things, hey, God, outside of God that God going to give you anyway. But when God give it to you, the blessings of the Lord make it rich and add it no sorrow. Anybody hear me up in here? Ooh, the kingdom were already here. By the time he was done, he said, all power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Satan was going to cut it down. He was just giving him earth. And could only give him earth for a temporary amount of time. Woo! Because he the prince of the power of the world. Hey, hey God. But he, he never bought it. <laughs> he on a lease. Hey, anybody hear me up in here? And his term is almost up. All right, all right, come on, Pastor, don't get that excited. Come on, hallelujah. But look at it, look at it. This system, huh, uh, 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 set in place by the prince, it leads men and women away from God. It don't lead us to God, all right? It promotes ideas and norms and practices and morals and mores, styles and fashions, and all of it is anti-God. It's a system, it's, it's, it's a system, and it say, this is in, this is hot, this looks good, this is how we talk, this is how we walk, this is how we live. And this system, all of humanity is marching to the beat of this system. They think they're unique, they think they're special, but they all go in the wide way, the broad gate, all of them doing the same thing. Saying the same thing, believing the same thing. Just little different nuances, but they all walking. But when God saves you, you look up and you marching in this crowd of people. All the same, all in black and white, wearing the same thing. God saved you, put you in color. You look around and you say, where am I? You done took the red pill and you say, look how they marching. Look how they're walking. Look what they believe in. Look what they're saying right and what's wrong. Look the things they read. Look the things they watch. Look the things they wear. None of this is of God. I'm walking up out of here. Because they marching to hell and I'm marching to Zion. I'm taking the narrow way, the straight gate where few find it. Come on, take your red pill this morning. We're talking about the world and the enemy. You see? This system, y'all, we're talking about this world that we live in. This system accentuates all that God hates. Everything that God hates, it promotes. And everything that God loves, it negates. It takes it from you. It makes it vanish, makes it disappear, acts like it's not important. And this system does this thing through government, through schools, through books, through movies, 
every long arm of this evil world system, every tentacle is pushing satanic things, anti-God things, anti-Christ things, huh? Huh? And taking away at the same time the things that we should love about God. This thing right here is so wicked, y'all. And we living in this thing. We wake up in it. We go to work in it. We go in the grocery store in it. It, it comprises their financial system, their political system, their religious system. I'm talking about, listen, this thing is big. This thing right here is a masterpiece of wickedness. Created only by an angelic intellect that's way higher than ours. It's a system that we born in that you can't even see unless you born again. <laughs> you can't even see it. You can't even see it unless you're born again. But we're going to show it to you today. You see now, let's go to the Bible, Deacon Carl. And we're going to look at what the Bible says about this world system because the Bible talks about it a lot. We're going to run through some scriptures, if y'all all right with that, huh? and let these scriptures just peel back the veil, the scales on our eyes. huh? And when you walk out of here, you're going to see things differently. All right? And so the Bible talks about the world system. First thing I have for you is 1 John 5 and 19, this world system that's ran by the devil. The world system is wicked, y'all. It's wicked. It's nothing good in it. Huh? Nothing good in it. 1 John 5 and 19 says, and we know that we are of God. And the whole world, it lieth in wickedness. It's, 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 it's smothered in it. It's marinating in it. Wickedness runs all throughout it. You know when you marinate a piece of meat in something? You're trying to get that taste running all through it. Well, the system, the taste of Satan is running all through it. It's marinating in wickedness. huh? Uh, this world system, it hates Jesus. And it hates God. All right? Uh, uh, when we look at John's gospel, chapter 15, verse 18, hey God, it hates Jesus, hates God, and by the way, it hates you, believer. All right? If the world hates you, Jesus says, know that it hated me before it hated you. Anybody hear me up in here? This system was designed. Listen, if, if, if you were Satan, huh? No, you're not Satan, but I'm just saying, wouldn't you design a system that hates your enemy? His system hates God. It hates Jesus. And it hates the believer. Huh? His job is to make all three of us look bad. His job is to make God look bad. His job is to make Jesus look bad, look false, look untrue. And it's perpetrated through the governments, the schools, the books. Everything is pushing this thing out. And as the time go on, first it's pushing it out subtly. You know, did Jesus rise from the grave? We found his body. Huh? He was not that. He was not this. Huh? Did God create the world? Is it not evolution? Is it not Big Bang? Do you see what I'm talking about? It's a system, and you think it's just by accident. It's no accident. It's intentional. And as time progressed, it's getting stronger. Because the older I get, and there's some older than me in here. Not too many, but there's some older than me up in here. Huh? Huh? Miss Lou, uh, Brother Eddie, y'all older than me yet? A little bit? Okay, all right, all right. But there's some that can, that can attest that the world now is quite different than the world they grew up in. Anybody hear me up in here? Woo! Because if you let time, if you can rewind and look at time, you can see the tentacles. You can see the tentacles. And the enemy is patient. The enemy is patient. You see, you see, to God, to God, when you compare him and God, God got him on time. Because God is eternal. He the beginning and the end. But when you compare him to us, he got us on time. Because we live 70, 80 years if we lucky. 
but he been here since the garden. And so time is on his side. And so his system, even though great men stand up to fight the system, he'll just wait because they're going to die. And when they die, if their children don't pick it up, if they never raise a successor, if they don't have a Joshua, if they don't have a Caleb, huh? then the fight against my system is over. I'll just wait. Because you, you, you think that evolution didn't have people fighting against it? They fought it. The church fought against that tooth and nail. But the enemy waited. They all died off. Then he dropped that thing in the schools. Bam. Huh? Same thing with the heliocentric universe. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, Pastor. Come on, come on, Pastor. Come on, Pastor. Keep going. Keep going, Pastor. Keep going. But the world hates God. It hurts, hates Jesus. If the world hates you, you know that it hated me before it hated you. If you were of the world, the world will love his own. But because you are not of the world, can I hear you, Christian? You are not of this world. You are not a part of this system. This system, huh, you might be in it and it can kind of put you to sleep, but, but you know that what it's promoting, what it's pushing is not you on the inside. Jesus right. said, you not of this world. He said, but I have chosen you out of the world. Therefore, the world system hates you. All right? Satan uses this world to blind men, like we say, vanity fair. If you're not careful, huh, this world, especially before you save, this world will keep you busy. Man, let me tell you, man, uh, 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 John Trapp say the, the, the three, the whole, the worldlings trinity is pleasure, profit, and preferment. So we out there trying to get pleasure, we out there trying to get profit, and we out there trying to get preferment. We out there trying to get rich or die trying. We ain't worrying about no God. We ain't worrying about no heaven. The world is like the, the hamster's wheel. Yes. Its job is just to keep you running. So you never look up and say, what is this all about? What is this all about? So some of your children, they just running in the world. But they never looking up and say, what's really going on? Who's in charge of this? Is there a God? Is there a, is there a way to salvation? They just running in the world. But the Bible says in 2 Corinthians 4.4, 4, in whom the God of this world had blinded the minds of them that believe not. He blinds the lost mind. He blinds their mind. The last place they want to be is church. The last thing they want to hear is the word of God. The last thing they want to do is pray. Because he's got them in the rat race. He's got them on the hamster wheel, and they're busy doing things that's nothing. Yes. Doing things that mean nothing. The old preachers used to say, everything in this world is just glittering dust. They're trying to get houses. They're trying to get cars. But these things mean nothing in eternity. But they are the things that the enemy keep us busy with so that we cannot be saved, so we will never get the gospel, so we'll never get in the church house. And the funny thing is, when we come to the church house, when we get saved, God going to give us those things anyway. They're running on the rat race for something they'll never catch up to. It's a little rat race with a picture of a house in front of it. And they're moving. And God is saying, if you'll just come to me, I'll give you the house, I'll give you the car, I'll give you, I'll give you joy, I'll give you peace, I'll give you love, I'll give you all of those things plus more if you will come to me because I'm a rewarder of them that diligently seek me. You're not going to get it on the hamster wheel. But the God of this world uses this world system to blind men. How many people in here know some of their loved ones or friends that's blinded by this world? That's just running the rat race. That's just doing things to get something. They, and they're not worried about God. He's using trickery, mirrors, and smoke. They're in a hall of mirrors, and they don't know where, they, where up is and down is. And his job is to run them for 60, 70 years till they die. He want to run them till they never look up and say, is there a God? By the time they end their coffin, then they're going to be like, wait, what did I do all my life? Why was I just drinking and in the club and in the casino? What, what did I do? Did I never try to make peace with my maker? 
And God forbid, sometimes when they wake up to it on their deathbed, sometimes it's too late. He'll have them on their deathbed to their very last breath. Then it's too late. Then it's too late. Let me give you the red pill right now. Let me wake you up right now. Let me show you what the world has for you right now. So you can look up and see eternity and that there is a God here. It's a system to blind people so that they will not believe and see the light of the glorious gospel. Now, before we save y'all, all of us are in the world. All right. And this is the terminology that me and First Lady use. We, 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 we either in the world or out of the world. You're either saved, born again, part of the church, or you are a worldling, all right? And we got a lot of friends and family that's worldlings. To be honest, we have some worldlings in here that's not saved, just statistically. Some in here are still in the world. Now, for some reason, God done drew you to church. I don't know. You lost a bet. I don't know. Mama pressure you, but you're here, all right? Hallelujah. And you in the church, but the church ain't in you yet. Anybody hear me up in here? The world is in you. You want this world. You want the profit. You want the performance. You want the pleasures of this world. And you put them first. You are a world lean. You're not born again yet. It's hard for you to even see and understand what I'm talking about because you caught in this matrix. And you think that it's reality, but this thing is all fake. He is reality. He is the one. Woo! In heaven is where we all going. Or oh, hell if we keep caught up with this world system. You see, this world, y'all, this world. So before we say we all running with the world. How many people can admit before you met Christ, you was a worldling? You were doing your thing. You was either out, out for pleasure, profit, or preferment. You wanted to be lifted high, preferment. You wanted to be the big one, the boss, the look the best in the club. Yeah, baby. Yeah, baby, the beat drop when I come. Boom. Oh, she in the club. <laughs> or profit. I'm going to get this money. I'm going to get this money. I'm going to get mine. I'm going to get this money. I, ain't got, I, don't, I don't care what I got to do to get this thing. The Negro touch my money, I'm going to get him. I'm going to burn him. I'm going to put that tool on. I'm going to get him. I got to get this money. I got to get in these streets. You know? And it don't have to be the streets. I'm going to get this job. I'm going to work 24-7. I'm not going to go to church. I'm not going to look at God. I'm not going to take care of my family. I'm going to get this money. You see? Or the pleasure, I'm going to get these women. I'm going to get these men. I'm going to label a bunch of them. I'm going to make children everywhere. I'm going to just listen. Come on, can we keep it real? Before we were saved, we was in it, y'all. And we was running a card in the Bible, say, Ephesians 2 tells us the course of the world. Because the world has a course. It's a trail, it's a track that everybody is on. Listen, when I was small, they used to have the little cars, the little hot wheel cars. And they had a track. Huh? And it was old school, it was like a rubber track. And you just put it on and you just roll that thing. And you think that car gonna do something special? They ain't doing nothing but up the track. It's just riding on the track. It ain't doing nothing special. It's running on the track. The worldling is doing nothing special. Just running on the track. Can't do nothing else. It's just running on the track. And you, had he quickened, you, Christian, had he quickened, had he made alive, allowed you to be born again, who were dead in trespasses, you were dead in sins. When in time past, you walked, you lived according to the course of this world. You did exactly what Satan was telling you to do. When the little hot wheel toys got a little bit better, they had the tracks with the little electricity. You would plug it up, but you would have to connect the car to the track. And the car would run on the track with a little thing in the middle of it to connect to the track, and it would just run. It was like trains on a track. That's us before salvation. You think you're doing something special. You think you're unique. You're just following the tracks. The tracks that's been laid by Lucifer. Hey, Dale, you ain't doing nothing for God. You ain't doing nothing special. You're not unique in any other way. You, you're a gangster. I understand that. But they've been gangsters hundreds of years before you. Went to jail or died just like you. 
Drug dealers 100 years before you went to, went to jail died just like you. Club goers 100 years before you died, disease, STDs, AIDS, monkeypox now, just like you. It's the same thing. It's a track. It's a track. It's a track of sin. But what he's not telling you is, is that the end of the track is death. The wages of sin is death. So you're on the track, but the track is leading to a cliff. And a few of us that get saved, we get off the track and we hanging around the cliff. And we saying, leave the tracks. Leave the world. Be saved. Be born again. We, we, done, we done been released from the matrix. We done broke the chains of the lies of the devil. And we say, listen, listen, the wages of sin is death. Come unto me, Yahshua says, all ye who are weary and heavy laden, and I'm going to give you rest. You see? But they dying. They falling off the cliff. Going according to the course of this world, which is according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience. This world has been set by him, designed by him. And if you're in the world, you're living according to his rules, his system, his mandate. Jesus died to deliver us from this world. Y'all still up out there? Yes. Huh? He died to deliver us from it. The Bible says in Galatians 1.4, Jesus, who gave himself for our sins, that he might deliver us from this present, what? Evil world. According to the will of God and our Father. All right? Now listen, believers cannot be a part of the world like that. We cannot be worldly. And truth be told, we are living in a day where the church is really, really worldly. All right? Really worldly. And unless you take the red pill, you're not going to be able to see it or tell the difference. But the church is worldly. Horatio Bonaparte said it like this. He said, I went out in the world and looked for the church and couldn't find it. Because the world wasn't doing the mandate of God, going around and save souls. He said, I went out in the world and couldn't find the church. He said, then I went in the church and I found the world. Woo! So the church not in the world, but the world is in the church. It's in the church. It done crept into the church, and the world is the church's kryptonite. It robs us of our power, of our authority. Huh? The world. The world. And you got to be able to see it. You got to be able to discern it. You got to be able to see the leaders of the church and know who worldly, huh? Who worldly or who Christian love the Lord. On paper, both might look the same. Both might be blessed. But one, hallelujah, blessed because they serve God. The other one blessed because they serve the world. You got to be able to see it. All right, watch this, watch this. Believers can't love this present world. It's not our home. It's not where we're going to stay. It's temporary. It's from the devil. So 1 John 2.15 says, love not the world. Neither the things that are in the world. Don't love it. Don't love it. Even if God bless you, don't love it. It can come today. It can go tomorrow. Don't love it. Enjoy it. Praise him for it, but don't love it. Anybody hear me up in it? Don't love the pleasure. Don't love the profit. Don't love the preferment because it's not our main goal. People so focus on it. When you focus on it, you talk about it, you look at it in your life, you're so jealous looking at it in other people's life, it's a sign that you got a problem with it. Envy and jealousy shows you got a problem with it. You're the only one worried about the car you drive or the car somebody else drive. That's, that shows that you love it too much. And you're going to fall out with people because of it. You love it too much. You're going to talk about people because they have it. You love it too much. Your eyes are focused on it when your eyes should be focused on Christ. 
You shouldn't even be able to tell with somebody driving what they live in and your focus is off. You're loving it. You're covetous. You're envious. And it affects you because you have an affection for it. That's the only reason why you see it like that. It's the only reason. See, when I walk through my house, I see sweets. No matter where sweets at, I see it. It's tucked away in a corner somewhere, wrapped up in a bag tight, because Grace will hide her sweets. Grace will put her, tie, tie her sweets up, tuck it. But I hide mine, too. <laughs> Caught Omar with a nutty buddy the other day, almost lost my mind. Little Debbie got us all tripping, the one. <laughs> but what you have an affection for catches your attention. So you see it, and it affects you. A lot of the church love the world, yo. You don't feel complete unless you have it. You don't feel happy. Unless you got it, you lose your joy, you know? Listen to me, man. Listen, it's a sign that he's not your number one, man. It's a sign. And as long as he's not your number one, he never going to give it to you. Because if you're worshiping it when you don't have it, when you're worshiping it when it's in the hands of other people, you say, man, what they going to do if I give it in their hands? He said, I looked for the world and found it in the church. But our God says, he said, love not the world. Don't love it. Neither the things that are in the world. If any man loved the world, watch this, the love of the Father is not in him. Help us. Help us. You love it too much. You treat the world like a woman. When you see her with anybody else, you feel some kind of way. You treat the world like your man. When you see him with anybody else, you feel some kind of way. That's when you love it. If you don't let that Negro go, I was about to say it. If you don't let that Negro go, and you see that Negro with somebody else, you'd be like, hmm, good for her. <laughs> I wish her luck, because that Negro ain't no good. Woo, baby, call me anytime. We go. In fact, we're going to talk about him, us, and you. You know, we're going, yeah, this Negro ain't no good. Or you see that girl with somebody, baby, woo, woo. Boy, your peace is gone. <laughs> you heard me? Your peace is gone. Woo. Have her. Take her. If you need some money to take her out, I'll give you some money. Just don't bring her around me no more. I done found the prince of peace. This is the, this is the princess of discord. When you don't love something, you don't mind if somebody else have it. But when you walk up to somebody with a car, you can't tell them they car look good. You pull up to their house, you can't say their house look good. You pull up, huh, and you see them got something nice or something nice on, or you walk up to their store. No, you won't even go to their store because you mad that they got something you don't have because you love it. Because you love it. Because you love it. You can always tell when somebody don't love something because when you get it, they celebrate with you. Where Christina and Bomani at? They pull up with the Beamer. I'm all in the Beamer. I'm laying down in the Beamer. Anytime y'all get anything, pastor celebrate with you. First lady celebrate with you. How you gonna say I love the world when I celebrate it more than you? When I'm up here talking about your pool, Cole, talking about your house. Somebody that loves something that you got, they don't do that kind of stuff because they mad you have it. Let me give you discernment, baby, please. The world. The world. And as believers, you're not supposed to love it. It is nothing, James Malvo. It is nothing. It's trinkets. It's nothing. It means nothing. 
from cars to houses to planes, they are trash compared to Almighty God. They are nothing, nothing. They are here today and gone tomorrow. They are like shoes that we put on our feet to get where we're going so we can give God some glory. They are nothing, nothing. You can't love it, Hebrews. You can't, it's, it's killing us because we love it too much. It's dividing us because we love it too much. Get the world out of you. Get the world out of you. Get it, just get it out. And when you see somebody with it, celebrate them. Give God the glory. Listen, I can name names up in here. You done come to my house and never said nothing. I know every single one. You ain't saying nothing. You done been walking through, you ain't even say a thing. You done been in my backyard, you know that this house wasn't like that. We did all that. But you expect me to say that when I go to yours. You, you see my car, you ain't seen nothing. You walk up in there like you, look, and you, look, look, you, you acting like not to see. You walk around like that. Negro, just say that the most hard and bless you. Just let, you, let it out your mouth. Just say it. And don't bring up nobody else stuff. Don't try to say somebody else stuff better. It shows your heart. Oh, man, I, hold on, man. I just got to take some stuff off up in here. Hold on, man, because, man, I'm about to listen, man. Man, listen, man, listen, man. Can't, man, come on, man. Come on. Man, come on. Man, hold on, man. Hold on, man. We, come on, man. Come on. Listen, man. Man, listen, man. It's just stuff. Listen. Listen. <laughs> listen. Listen, man. Come on, man. Listen. Man, listen, man. Listen. Man, come, man, come on, man. Man, you're whirling, man. You're whirling, man. <laughs> you're whirling, man. And you love it, man. You're whirling, man. And you need to repent of it. You're whirling, man. Isaac building his house. You think them, you think them Negroes telling Isaac congratulations because his house he building? You're worldly, man. Am I the only one that experienced you pull up in a nice ride? Did they tell you something about your ride? You're worldly, man. You lose all kind of weight. You think they're telling you about the weight that you lost? Man, them Negroes is, them Negroes is petty, man. You're worldly, man. You're worldly, dog. You're worldly. You're worldly, dog, and you just, man, you just, man, you're full of it, and you're fleshly, dog. You're just all of the world, and you got to watch the devil, man. Because you pull up in the bins, they're going to say you worldly. But they're the ones that notice your bins, Chancellor. They're the ones that can't sleep because of your bins, Chancellor. They're the ones that won't say, Chancellor, your white bins outside over there is beautiful. They're never going to tell you that, but they're going to say you worldly. Come on, man. Come on, man. Man, listen, man. I'm all like, what am I always doing? You do it, Dad. Show them how we get down, Dad. Show them how we get down. Listen, man, that's just too much, man. He said, love not the world, man. He said, neither the things of the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father. Not even in them, man. Not even in them, man. You see? 
He said in First First John two sixteen. Look, he, he gonna talk about it. He said, for all that is in the world, it's just this: the lust of the flesh, pleasure; the lust of the eyes, profit; and the pride of life, preferment. And all of it is not of the Father, but it is of the world. And the world, it passes away. <laughs> no matter what we have, gets old. Houses get old. Cars get old. It's all nothing. It was new back in 94. Guess what? It's 2022. It ain't new no more. So why make a big deal when somebody get it? Celebrate with them, baby, but don't act like they done stab you in the back. Everything they got going to get old. Everything you have going to get old. It passes away. It's stuff. It's nothing. It's glitter and dust. Hebrew, wake up. You see? James 4.4, 4, look what he says. Friend of the world equals an enemy of God. When God looks down and sees that you are worldly, when he looks down and sees that you love it too much, not when he looks down and sees you have it, because Abraham had it, Jacob had it, David had it, Solomon had it, Hezekiah had it. It's not you having it, but it's it having you. He says, when it has you, he says, you adulterers and adulteresses. It means that you cheated on God. You cheated on God with stuff. You're envious of somebody with stuff. When God is sitting there and saying, but you have me. <laughs> God is in your house. You got him. And somebody got some stuff. You see, what my little ring? Someone on the table? Y'all watch my pants, y'all. Hold on, I can't bend down. I can't hold my pants, y'all. Hey, God. Watch him, watch him, Mike. So somebody got some stuff. A little while. But you have God. God is with you. Walking with you every day. Holding you when you cry. All that. So you got God. And they have a watch. We're just breaking it down. So you start looking at that watch. And you start feeling some kind of way about their watch, their ring, their house, their car. And, God, and, and you leave in God. You, but, and God say, hold on, hold on, but you got me. I own the cattle on a thousand hills. I created the diamonds, the gold, the rubies, everything that you want I am and I can give you. Yes. But, but the watch, the watch. God said you adulterous and adulterer. Because your heart had committed adultery to me. You're loving the things of this world more than you love me. He said you're an adulterer and adulteress. Don't you know that friendship with the world is enmity against God? And all that will be a friend of the world is an enemy of God. What we point out in the church is, is how we have become enemies with God because of our lust for stuff. You know? You know? Now for the believer, hallelujah, I think I can get back dressed now. For the believer, the world, if you're not careful, will choke the word of God in you. All right? Meaning that we can come here and get some work done where you can want to change your life and live for God. But if you're not careful, that word, that word will choke the word clean out. Meaning that you could leave here with all this heavy lifting that we're doing on the prince, all this teaching that we got going on on the cross, us being the Hebrews. This world and the trinkets of it could make you unfruitful. Meaning that it'll put a pause on your spiritual growth. He says in his word, he says in Matthew 13, 22, 
He also that receiveth seed among the thorns is he that heareth the word. Watch this. And the cares of this world and the deceitfulness of riches. What do they do? They choke the word and he become it unprofitable. You have to be careful with this thing. You can't love it because it's going to make your spiritual growth stagnant. And a lot of y'all not moving up spiritually. A lot of y'all not growing spiritually. Why? Because you love the world too much. And it's choking all this good word. You're leaving church and you ain't getting nothing. We got teachers coming up, man. They hitting it out the park on Tuesdays, huh? You leave here, you ain't got nothing. Because you're too worried about what they got in the parking lot. You're too worried about where they're living. You're too worried about all kind of other things. So, listen, it's making you unfruitful. You're caring too much about it. It's choking it. And the funny thing about it is, huh? God said, just seek me first and I'm going to give it to you. So, he's standing right here telling you, when you're looking at the watch, he's telling you, I'm going to give you the watch. Just, just, just follow me. Just seek me. I'm going to give you the car. I give you the plan. I give you anything you want if you will seek me. But instead of seeking him, we seek in the world. Are y'all understanding what I'm saying? If you're not careful, it's not only going to choke the word in your life. It'll pull you away from God altogether. It'll kill you, though. It'll pull you away from God altogether. The Bible says in 2 Timothy 4 and 10, For demons had forsaken me, <laughs> having loved this present world. Leave God for it. Clean up, leave church. Leave church. Like, look, I just love it too much. I, I'm, I'm, I'm out of here. I'm out of here. I got to go get it. I'm out of here. I don't have time for God on Sundays. I'm out of here. I can't take watching other people get blessed in here. I'm out of here. He loved it too much. So he forsook the most high God. You see? You see? For us as believers, God's clarion call has always been for us. In Romans 12, 2, you know, as we talk about this system, this system. And what it is, is actually like a, like a rice pot. It's like a slow cooker. And the thing about a slow cooker is, is that whatever you put in it, that's what all of it going to taste like. And so you put vegetables in and all that, and all the meat and the vegetable, everything tastes alike. Why? Because of the steam and the pressure. It melt, melts, amalgamizes everything that's in it together. Mm. That is the world. The world is trying to make you something. It's trying to make you something. And so God tells us in Romans 12, 2, as the resistance, the rebellion, in it but not of it. The last people to represent God on this place, controlled by Satan. He says, you're in the rice cooker, you're in the pressure cooker, it's pressuring you to say certain things, do certain things, act certain ways, love certain things. But God says, be not conformed to the image of this world. Don't conform to it. Because what the world is doing, the world has a, has a cookie cutter. And humanity is the dough. And it's just cutting. And all, every man, every woman, look alike, think alike, sound alike. With a little bit of nuances that are meaningless, Democrat, Republican. Little nuances. But it's cookie cutter. God say, while all of them look gingerbread mans, he say, do not be conformed by that. Your cookie should look like this. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? Your cookie should. <laughs> I had to make sure y'all was up. That's what your cookie should look like. You see? He said, be not conformed to this world, the image of this world, but be ye transformed. 
transformed. Transformed. Metamorphosis. Where you go from caterpillar to butterfly. All of them walking on land, you flying in the sky. Be ye transformed. How do we do it? By the renewing of our minds through the word of God. That's what renews our mind. This is our map, our guide to keep us from being worldly. And I'm going to talk to you about some of the world things in a second. And I'm going to show you how the world is so diametrically opposed to the word of God. And it is a slow fade. It is a fade that is so slow, hundreds of years, centuries, thousands of years until we wake up in 2022 and we so far from Genesis 1. We so far from, from the Mosaic law. We so far from the Bible. It's a slow fade. Because he has time on humanity. You see? One generation going to stand up and say, this is not going down. The snake will slither back and say, y'all going to die off? Let's see if y'all children say the same thing after I run them through my schools and teach them. Y'all still up on them? He tell us don't be conformed to it. He tell us keep yourself unspotted from the world. James 1.27, pure religion and undefiled before God and the Father is this, to visit the fathers, the widows in their affliction, and Christian, to keep yourself unspotted unspotted by the world. Amen. Not even a spot of it on you. You don't think like it think. You don't roll like it roll. You roll how the Bible roll. Ooh. He tells us, y'all not, not done. I got a few more scriptures. Come on, come on, come on. He tells us that we are called to live godly in this present world. Because I hear people say, well, I'm a believer, but, you know, I'm in the world. I might as well just rock it out. But I'm going to get to heaven when I'm done. That's not true Christianity. True Christianity says, teaching us that denying ungodliness, denying worldly lust, we should live soberly while the world is drunk, righteously while the world is sinful, and godly while the world is satanic in this present world. This is how we're supposed to live. Different than the rest of them, you know. A couple of more scriptures, then we're going to get to some practical things. The world is worthless. Isaac, I'm telling you, you're building a beautiful house over there. You see? You see? You see? You see? Cool, y'all got a beautiful house over there. Wonderful pool. You see? Aola Malvo, y'all moving up. Wonderful car. Huh? Ms. Andrew, you doing your thing over there. Blessed woman of God. Huh? Huh? Brother Carl, look, man, look. We come a long way, man. You know what I'm saying? Renata Frank, we done been over there, baby. It look good over there. Huh? And so many others, I can call out your names, all of y'all. And look, you done, you done moved up. You're not where you was. You have some things. Come on, brother. Love, it's nice over there. But let me tell y'all one thing. Compared to God, it's worthless. <laughs> it's worthless. Kendrick is worthless, man. It's worthless. If all that separate me and somebody else is nothing when we get to glory, man. It's worthless. You hear me, Braylon? It's nothing. When we get to heaven, we on the same scale, me and you. But it's what I do for Christ. That's going to last. You see, listen, listen, listen. Jesus says, for what is, a, what is a man profited if he should gain the whole world? Now, we got a little bit of stuff in the world. Yeah. Huh, Renata? We got a little bit of stuff. Got a little change a little. 
We're not do you dance. How you do that little dance? That shit, man? Yeah, we got a little bit of stuff. You know what I mean? Wait, Kip, Kip, making me laugh. We got a little bit of stuff. We all got a little bit of stuff, y'all. But God said, in addition to your little bit of stuff, if you should gain the whole world, Pop, not just that one call, but all the cars in the world was yours. Not just that one house, but every house in the world was yours. Not just that one business, but every business Anna, in the world was yours. Not just that one diamond, but every diamond in the world was yours. He said, what would it profit you if you lost your soul? Ooh! It would mean nothing is nothing is nothing is empty. The world is worthless. It's worthless. And if you've been thinking about it too much, if not having it been making you unhappy, I pray that God is recalibrating your route right now. I pray your GPS is rerouting right now. If you're feeling upset or sad, but you're not happy, because let me tell you something. Listen, you always got it better than somebody on earth. Somebody has it worse than you. You got something that somebody don't have, but besides all of that, it's worthless. It's worthless. It would not profit you in glory. Not one single iota. You see? We just got to recalibrate. Why does it not profit us? Jesus says his kingdom is not about that. Thank you. Hallelujah. Woo! He tells us in his word, listen, in John 18, 36, he says, listen, my kingdom is not of this world. It don't consist in those things. I'll always reward my servant with things to bless them because I ain't going to let the devil out bless me. <laughs> That's how God operates. He delights to see the prosperity of his servants. He want to make your life easier and bless you. He wants to do those things. All right? He does. But at the end of the day, he wants his people to have their mind on the one needful thing, the most essential thing, and that's relationship with him. Because his kingdom is not of this world. It's not in things. It's not in things. You know? It's not in things. And so we're talking about the world, and I won't give you a little more. Y'all still up out there? Come on, is this, is this, can, are we, are we dealing up in here? Are we dealing? I don't mean y'all houses don't worth nothing. I'm sure uh, the realtors would, would disagree. It's worth something. I'm talking about it. And glory. You see? You see? The world. This is the system. And this world is not our home. And so I'm going to go through some things, amen, talking about the world a little bit deeper. Going through its, its philosophies and precepts. And uh, I may offend some of y'all as we talk about this. Because we've been in it so long, Frank. And, and, and we, can, we, can, we can think that something is our opinion, but we've just adopted the opinion of the masses. You got to be careful because you can adopt the world's opinion and not even know it's the world. <laughs> you not even know it's the world. You, you, just, you, just, you just got swept up. You just got swept up in the rice cooker. And the pressure cooker. And you taste like all the other meat. But God told his people, you should taste different. You should be salt and light. Anybody hear me up in here? Ooh, they all taste like carrots. You taste like salt. Come on, somebody. All right, so let's, let's, go, this, let's go deeper. So the world, let me describe it. The world is anti-God. Anti-Bible. Anti-Christ anti-creation, all right? I'm just giving it to you. Pastor, how you know it's anti-God? Because you can't bring up God everywhere. And when you bring up God, don't you feel? 
Isn't it hard to say God, you know, and, and for some, you know, because it's, it's, it's a pressure. Because the way the system was built is built to take God out. They don't want him in the public schools. They don't want him in governments in the public squares. They don't say Merry Christmas no more. They say Happy Holidays. But they could quickly say Happy Hanukkah. Uh -huh, yeah. They don't want God in there. Took the manger scene out of a lot of city halls. Legally, we've been following all of this. But while they're taking God out, watch this. They, in one city, they built a Baphomet statue, and it was all right to put Satan, but it wasn't all right to put God. Are y'all hearing me up in here? And you think that's coincidence? It's a system. It's a system that's anti-God. It's anti-Bible. Huh? You can't bring up the Bible everywhere. You can't even have the Bible at work. So most places. Them children can't open the Bible and read the Bible at school. You think that's all coincidence? It's the system. It's the satanic system. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, it's Antichrist. They don't want you to see Jesus. Them athletes, when they come up there, I want to thank the Lord Jesus. Okay, we out of time right now. <laughs> PMG just did a uh, concert, hallelujah. Uh, Miss Vanessa Williams, bless them to be out there, hallelujah. They, they, they out there talking about Jesus and the gospel. They waiting on the news to see the interview. <laughs> Can't talk about Jesus too much. Even on the radio, if they count how many times you mention Jesus. If you mention Jesus too much, they're not playing your song on the radio. That's right. You see, because the name of Jesus shakes some things up. Yeah. <laughs> it's power in that name. They're, listen, it's anti-God, anti-Bible, anti-Christ. Oh, yeah, man, Steph, them, they try to talk about Jesus, God. Man, slow that down, dog. Slow that down. Talk about what you did. But I won't give glory to God. Uh -uh, talk about what you did. You see? It's anti-creation. All they do is push evolution. When was the last time you was in, the, in your children's class or opened a book and it said in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth? Huh? Well, evolution is real. No, it's called the theory of evolution. It's just a theory. So why you could push your theory but you ain't going to push mine? But it's anti-God, it's anti-Bible, it's anti-Christ, it's anti-creation, huh? Anti-heliocentric, uh, 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 oh, goodness. Don't do it, Pastor. Anti-flat earth, like the Bible says it's supposed to be. Anti-firmament. Huh? But they're going to push the globe, they're going to push the solar system everywhere you go. Anything the Bible says it's supposed to be, they're not going to push that. Is anti-Christian. You don't see our faith on TV unless it's Christian churches putting out the movies, no. Yeah, it's got to be prayer room. It's got to be, it's got to be churches putting that out. But you're going to quickly see them in yoga pants with the yoga hands up. Everything is yoga, 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 yoga. Why y'all not pushing Christian, Christian, Christian? The world. Let me just peel back the veil. Look, the world. Listen, let me tell you. The world is pro-Satan, pro-science, pro-evolution, pro-Big Bang, pro-false religion. That's what the world is. That's what it pushes. And everywhere you go, every movie you watch, every school system, public school system, that's what they pushing. They pushing that. So our teachers that's in those systems, while they push that, slip in a little Jesus for them. Woo! Slip in a little Christ for them. Huh? Be that salt. Be that light. You on assignment. You on assignment. And all you need to do is put a little bit of Jesus. Huh? You part of the revolution. You part of the rebellion. Huh? Yeah, they told you that yeah, you can't do it. But listen, whenever the laws of man go against the laws of God, you have the right, the power, the authority to disobey the laws of man on behalf of your God. So when that child ain't got nowhere else to turn, you tell that child, turn to Jesus, turn to God, hold a hand to pray, slip them a scripture. You on assignment. You part of the rebellion. We surrounded, we on enemy territory, but you are a double agent. You in it, but not of it. 
You got to give them. And the weapons of our warfare are not caught on the Almighty through God to the tearing down a stronghold. So that one scripture, that one prayer, that one move of God that you do will change their life forever if you knew the power that you will as a believer. Yeah, 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 yeah. You see what I'm saying? This world is anti-family, anti-marriage, anti-husband and wife, anti-faithfulness in marriage, and it's anti-childbearing. And all those things are what God is for because God is for family. In the very beginning, he told Adam and Eve to be fruitful and multiply, to marry, to be together. The world and the system and the economy and all of the governments and all of the rules make it hard to be family these days. Make it hard to sit down and eat together. Make it hard to raise children the right way. All of the economic pressures to go out to work and everybody away from home. All of that is really not what God intended, y'all. But the system is increasing pressure on the family. It's hard to be husband and wife and raise kids the right way, huh? If you're in this world system, you've got to come out of it, see God's way, and say, world, we're not going to do it that way. Anybody hear me up in here? Huh? It's anti-marriage. The world says, stay single, baby. All the movies out there are living single, huh? Friends, huh? Everybody shacking up, everybody doing whatever. There's nothing about no marriage. All the songs out there about being single, rolling here, going there, getting with that one, then getting with this one. It's promoting a lifestyle that God is not promoting. God is not for singleness unless you're called to that. God is for marriage. When a man find a wife, he find it a good thing and gain favor from the Lord. But the world says stay single. Stay single. Don't even, don't even approach no woman until you're good in, in your 50s. Don't even approach no woman. Huh? Huh? Don't even approach no woman. Get your, get your, first, it, first, it, first it was like, you know, and back in the day it was the teens. Now they want you to go to school first. Now they want you to get a house first. Now they want you to have kids first. Well, baby, we done did everything. Do, do, should we get married? It promotes singleness and shacking up, promotes fornication. This world is anti-faithfulness in marriage. The world system puts you in jeopardizing and compromising situations with people that's not your husband and people that's not your wife. You go to a work environment every day and you're with somebody, staying late after hours, doing all that. The world, the world. And then they want to say, what, you jealous? What, you Negro. The world system got some of y'all spending more time with somebody that's not your wife than you go home and spend with your wife. You spend an eight hours of work day with them. You get home, you're tired, you spend two hours. Hopefully, y'all not fussing them two hours. Y'all go to bed, you wake up, you go back to, to Mr. Muscles over there at work. <laughs> but it's set up that way. It's a system. Same way with the husband. Go to work eight hours a day. Huh? Go to work with Miss America. Huh? Eight hours looking at Miss America. What do you think about this project? <laughs> and you know the world promote work dress? Work dress is club dress now. Miss America, America, Miss America, well, I think that uh she pulling up and pulling down the whole time. I think. I think that we should. <laughs> Come home two hours. Your wife done worked eight hours too. Her hair like this. <laughs> She's trying to cook you something in the kitchen. You open the door. What you, you home already? <laughs> the world, the world, the system is designed for it. You got to learn how to come out of it, to see it, come out of it, do something different. Because if you do it like they do it, you're going to fail like they want you to fail. All right? 
all right, is anti-childbearing. The world don't want you to have children. Oh, no, oh, no. They, they, they preach is overpopulated already. So they do things to dissuade you from having children. The world is pro-abortion, not pro-childbearing, you know? You know? That's the world. Okay, let me put the pros up there that we just discussed. Pro-fornication, pro-shacking up, pro-dating until 35, pro-working late, pro-spending time with people that's not your spouse. Guess what? Pro-homosexual. That's what the world is. Oh, yeah, they want to link the homosexual movement now with the movement of the people. Oh, yeah, like black people, it's a civil right. Just when homosexuals was in slavery. They whipping them. They putting them in slavery because they. You see, you got to watch. You could, you, could, you could adopt the policies of the world. Our older saints come back in time. Did the world believe in these things like they believe in it now? You see? Pro abortion. Now watch this. Watch this. I got a couple more. Then we going to go, yo. And I'm going to just pick up where I left off that next time. It is anti-modesty. The world. All right? All right? And pro-nudity. It really is. If you look up the history of fashion and the way people used to dress to, where they, to, where, to the way they dress now, you're going to know that Houston, we got a problem. All you got to look at is the bathing suits back then and the bathing suits today. You're going to say, Houston, we got a problem. They got somebody behind this sewing machine and it ain't God. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? And what's happening is, like, like one of the books that First Lady, we used, to, we used to keep around Bible study when we was a Bible study, it's called The Undressing of America. Satan is slowly removing the clothing off of men and women. And as time progressed, the shorts getting shorter. As time progressed, the clothes getting tighter. You understand what I'm saying? And it's getting to a point to where you can't go nowhere and really buy something that's modest anymore. The system is trying to force us in to a look. Yes. Now we got Christian wearing yoga pants and you don't do yoga. <laughs> we got Christians wearing biking shorts and you don't own a bike. We got Christians wearing exercise clothes and baby, when was the last time you exercised? <laughs> you only doing it because it fit the styles and the mores of the world. And I'm not here to judge you. I understand all that. All right? But all I'm saying is, is that that's not the way of God. That God always wanted his people to be covered. He always wanted us to be covered. And all we ask at church, listen, listen, if you're going to wear something, and I understand this need even making my suits tight. Listen, but, you, but listen, you got to have a little covering. All right, just a little covering. Because, baby, you're a Hebrew. You understand what I'm saying? You're a Hebrew, baby. And that thing, that thing, that thing, that thing dance when you ain't dancing. You just walking, that thing just... And I'm talking about the men and the women. Why show them why that? Come on, show them why. Show them what you're working with. Listen, I'm joking, man. I'm joking. Don't you believe <laughs> But watch this. Watch this. But the world will slip in the church. And you can put on churches and even on our worship team and everything else. We slowly fade from modesty. We slowly fade from, from covering. I'm not judging nobody, y'all. I got pants, I got clothes too that I went in there to buy and I thought it was my size. Y'all know what I'm saying. <laughs> All my pants look big now. I'm like, you know, I thought that was my size. But if you're going to put it on, just put your little longer shirt. Put your little covering. All right? Just a little covering. Now, everybody uncomfortable now up in here. 
they're going to be walking out of church like this. <laughs> so they're going to have their Bible. Look, great, they're going to have their Bible. <laughs> Baby, your Bible is this big, but you uh, <laughs> I know the word of God is powerful, but baby, we're going to need two Bibles to walk out of here. <laughs> They're tearing pages up in Mr. D. I'm not here to condemn you. I'm not here to talk about you. You understand what I'm saying? I'm not. I'm not. I'm not here to judge you, you know? But all I'm saying is, you know, around your house, do your thing. Where would you want? Where your yoga pants around your house? But we ain't doing yoga in here. Why are you coming to church in yoga pants? It's the world. And it's been crept into the church. You know? We just got to be careful. We got to be careful because all these opinions, all these norms, all these fashions, and we just got to watch it. And I'm not saying that, hallelujah, as Christians, we can't be stylish. I'm not saying that. But all it is is you take it and, and, and you look at it and you say, okay, this is what the world got. And you just tweak it a little bit. You just tweak it a little bit. Huh? If it's a nice top, huh? You know how they wear them top. Baby! It don't connect. I'm waiting for the top to connect. You know what I'm saying? At least connect. First it used to connect low. Now it's not connecting at all. It's a, it's a fashion miracle. Well, how it tied? All I'm saying is, you know, so if, it, if, it, if it's all that, listen, you wear your little undie shirt. Just see the undie shirt. It's a little undie shirt. We ain't came to church for all that. <laughs> you see a little undie shirt? Huh? And the shreshes. Y'all know they're not making them long no more. And you're like, wait, what that is? That's a shirt or a dress. It's a shresh. It's a shirt dress. All right? So if you got your yoga pants, match your yoga pants with a shresh. <laughs> and now you got the complete thing. It's good now. We good. Pooh, we good. Because if you put two together, two now make one. <laughs> and now you're good. But you can't do the yoga pants and the yoga top. What, what you saying, Pastor? I, I, and I'm going on, because this is fun. I'm, I'm playing, having fun. But all I'm saying is, is that the world has crept in. And you got to be able to see it. It's a constant erosion for how God wants earth to look. Constant. 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 And we're not saying, what? Now, some people are going to rebel. You know, I don't talk about their clothes. Watch how they come next week. Turtleneck in August, look. <laughs> Turtleneck in August, long sleeve, dressed to the floor in a train. Their children gonna live, their children gonna be. That's the rebellious. Well, if I can't wear yoga pants, I'm going all the way, you know. You're rebellious. You're rebellious, that's a middle ground. Are y'all with me so far? That's the world, y'all. Anti-parent, anti-father and mother. All the movies and everything else. Yeah, don't listen to your parents. Listen to the children that's in the world. Man, the parent is the most uncool thing in the universe. You don't know nothing. Now, you done lived two lives, two-day lives. You done been in the hood that they're that they in, went to the schools that they're in. You know everything that they're feeling on the inside because what they feel on the inside they got from you. You're the best one to show them the mistakes you made so they won't make the same mistakes. But the world, the world say and teach them that the parents know the least about them than anybody else. They would rather go to their own youth peers and get advice about love, about life, about dating, huh? which is no advice at all. All right? Because the world is youth wisdom. The world celebrates youth. 
But God celebrate the gray, the hoary head, the, the gray head. God celebrate age and life and wisdom, especially if it's found in Christ. That's what God celebrate. But the ones God celebrate, the world don't celebrate. The world beat them up on the street, hit them with, with traffic cones. The very ones that can show them the way that they should go. Huh? But the world lift up little entertainers and rappers, you know, that's young, ain't been nowhere, most of them. Don't really have nothing, most of them. Living on Ashkenazi, upper class welfare checks, most of them. These singers and rappers. And that's who they listening to. Instead of listening to the ones that's older, who done been before. Come on, give y'all some praise. I, whoo, I'm about to get out of here, y'all. Hallelujah. Brothers, y'all can come. I ain't going to get halfway through this, but we're going we gonna, to we gonna pick up next time and talk a little bit more about the world. The world is anti-church. Oh, yeah. It's anti-church. You're here today because you've overcome the pressure of the world. That's why you're here today. Because the world is like, stay home. Go to work, but stay home. Cut your grass, but stay home. Go to the soccer game, the, the, the football game, the, the softball game, the, the children, this and that. You ever notice how they're having all of that on Sundays now? Because the world is anti-church. The devil don't want you here this morning. He don't want you in church. The world is anti-church. Huh? That's why everybody else could hurt you and you stay there. That's why everybody else could make a mistake and do you wrong, but you still go back. Oh, they done got your order wrong at McDonald's, at Popeye's. Baby, next week you're going to be over there. People don't hurt you before, friends, spouses. Huh? I'm talking about all men are hurt. Spit on you, cheat on you, lie to you, catch them in the act, in your house, but you're still there. But let the church say one wrong word. Let one person in the church do you something. Now, you ain't left home. You ain't left him. You ain't stopped McDonald's. You ain't stopped Walmart. You ain't stopped none of the other things that's in the world, but let the church do one thing. And you going forever. You going for good. You home now. You don't gave up on God. You're back drinking. You're back smoking. You're back on the drug. You're back running around on your wife. I'm prophesying because some gone, but I know you're running in the streets. You're back fornicating. You ain't got to tell me. I know I saw you. I saw the spirit on you. You're looking older now. Your health not revitalized because to be plugged into the true vine is where you get your life. I see you. You look 50 years older now because you left the place of blessing because the world, the world, the world, the world hates the church and got you so sensitive. Some of y'all today, I talk about your tight pants. You, that's it. That's it. Yeah, that's what they're saying. They already said it. They closed their Bible. That's yeah, it's over. But that boss at work talk about your tight pants, and guess what? That next day, you come up in there with a, a dress, a shirt, a uh, dashiki on your head. You come up in there Muslim. You ain't going to leave AT&T. You ain't going to leave Amazon. But you're going to leave the house of God. Yeah. I went in the world. And I didn't see the church. But I walk up in the church. And as I look around, I saw nothing but the world. The world. The world. Worldly. Worldly, worldly. Let's get it right, saints. Let's get it right, saints. 
team. Let's get it right. We are the rebellion. We are the resistance. We are the remnant of God's kingdom here on earth to take back what the devil stole from almighty God. And we are here and we are to hold out until our king returns. <laughs> we are to possess the land and create a beachhead so that when he comes back, hallelujah, he got people that's going to roll with him, rock with him, and follow him. We are here to present the world an alternative to a world system that's anti-God, anti-Christ, anti-Bible. We are here to show them that there's a different flavor, a different taste, a different aroma, hey God. That what the world has given them is not the only way, but there is another way. And the way, the truth, and the life is Yahshua, Hamashiach, the Lord of glory. We are here in this place. Hallelujah. To not be of the world. Hallelujah. From it, but not of it. In it, but not like it. Having it, but not loving it. We are here in this place. Huh? to be called the people of God for such a time as this. Next time we come, I'm telling you, I want to get to it so bad. But we're going to talk about the history of this system. When the devil started it, how he did it, how it came together, and what God did to counteract it. Woo! Woo! But I just had to describe it to you so that we can see it. So that we can see it. All right? I'm telling you, because you are God's answer to it. Yes, you are. You're God's answer. Huh? We just got to get it out of us, y'all. All right? So at this time, listen, we're going to have some prayer at this altar. We're going to ask for those that's in here that, that may not be saved, may not be born again may not know the Lord. I talked about the world, and, and you know if that's your drive. Because that's how you can know if you're saved or not. What drives you? What wakes you up in the morning? What is your reason for being? Is it stuff? Is it pleasure? Is it preferment? Is it the world? Is that what's driving you? That's what's calling you to excellence? Or is it God? Because the saved person, man, your drive's supposed to be God. So we're going to have an altar call and, and ask for those that, that's unsure of their salvation, and, and we're going to get you right. But we're going to call for Christians too. Because as believers, we can lose focus. And can begin to value this, this, this Mardi Gras trinkets, these beads. As though they were something. It is worthless. It is you and your soul that is the most valuable thing on this earth. It's you. It's you. You're the most. So we're going to call for Christians and we're going to pray to God for the right balance y'all what will put him first See? and you're gonna look you look you're gonna have all this stuff I'm telling you you're gonna have it but it ain't gonna mean nothing to you you can wreck it you can burn down look you walk clean out of that Don't mean nothing. Don't mean nothing. So listen, ushers, if y'all can, just, just open up the gates. 
and all those that would like to come to the altar for prayer, come, come, let's come, come on, come on, come on. To make sure we got this right, to make sure we got him first, to make sure, hallelujah, Woo. we just got to get it right, we just got to get it right. And I'm telling you, once you have this right, watch the blessings flow because he can trust you with it. He can trust you with it. He can trust you with it. Perfect, Brian. Do it, baby. Do it. I will trust in you. Come on, come on. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I will trust in you. That's all he wants. pray right here. Amen. Hallelujah. And then we can probably get to that good part. I will remain confident. I will see the goodness of the Lord. Because guess what? You are going to see the goodness of the Lord. You are going to see the goodness of the Lord. Yes, you are. Yes, you are. Yes, you are. All right. You're going to see it. You're going to see it. All this was was just a recalibration this morning. Just a rerouting this morning just to get you back on track. And he only does that when he's ready to bless. When he's ready to bless. When he's ready to bless. Let's put him first right now. Let's put him first. Let's take our eyes off the stuff. Let's take our eyes off of other people's stuff. Let's stop being of this world. huh? And let's be like God this morning. Let's seek him in his kingdom this morning. Come with me. Let's go to the most high in prayer. Say, most high God. Thank you. For heaven. Thank you. For eternity. Thank you. That everything here. Is just dust. Temporary trinkets. Temporary trinkets. Mardi Gras beads. Mardi Gras beads. Empty, wrappers. Empty wrappers. Paper. Paper. Wood. Wood. And mud. And mud. It's, all it's all worthless. Compared to you. Compared to you. Forgive us. Of putting too much, too much. Value, value on mud. On mud. You, are the most important thing. you are the most important thing. I admit, I admit I've, sinned I've sinned against you. But I believe, but I believe that, you love me so much that you love me so much that you died for me. You, you didn't die for houses. You didn't die for cars or businesses. You died for me. And I believe you were buried 
And on the third day, you rose again. Lord, save me and complete me. Fill me with your presence. Stuff, things cannot complete me. Only you can complete me. Make me whole. Fill me now. Take the world out of me and put heaven on the inside of me. In Jesus' name. Amen, amen, amen. Come on, give y'all some praise. Come on, give him some praise. Come on, give him some praise in this house. Hallelujah. Woo. Confident in this. I will see the goodness. keep you. May he cause his face to shine upon you. May the most high be gracious unto you. Lift up his countenance upon you and bless you with shalom peace. Peace in your family, in your mind, in your body, on the job. Peace everywhere you go. Everywhere you go. Peace. Peace and prosperity. Woo! But may it never possess you. May you always possess your possessions. In Yahshua, Yahshua, Jesus' name we pray. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Love y'all. Be blessed. Good morning. Good morning, y'all. What's Got going on, fam? a couple minutes. It's still morning. <laughs> yes, three minutes left. Yeah. Good morning. <laughs> We're so excited to talk about the word once Woo. again on the post show with our yes. reflections. Reflecting on the word. Yes, Amen. reflecting on what uh, up, sister. You can have a seat. Yeah, on right. what the Lord brought to pastor on this morning. Woo. And it was a good one. It was a deep one. It's a convicting word. A word Convicting. That... It touched everybody, I'm sure. That was, yes. I'm sure there's nobody in here that that word didn't touch on something mm. that you're dealing with right now in life. Yes. And, uh, it was it was awesome. Really, it was amazing, really life changing, and yes. we just want to kind of dissect that and talk about it a little bit on this morning. Right, right. So we'll jump right into right it. Right into it, y'all ready? Good morning. Good What's morning. going on, my sister? <laughs> so this morning, you know, I did my little testimony. Yes, mm -hmm. and I kind of I did want to come up here and kind of finish because you told me you yeah. like you saw it all I, in my. I did yeah. say that. I say I felt like there was more to it. Yes. Yes. But before you get started, let the let the let the family know. Let oh. our family know who you are. I be feeling like y'all know me. My name is Sky <laughs> Lawrence. I am of the Lawrence tribe. Yes. Um, my husband, Bo. Yeah, everybody's you yes. know, together. Um, today I did my testimony. Well, a portion of my testimony. And Minister Brian, of course, he saw me in the back. And he was like, I know you had more to say. And I did kind of want to finish it a little bit. Finish so it. So I kind of wanted to, um, not on just what, just giving Pastor and First Lady um, their honor. I wanted to make sure the ministers, Minister Brian, Minister Sam, Minister Phil, all of them, everybody feeding to me. You yeah, know what I'm saying? Since I've been coming here. Um, Deacon is Mary. Miss Mary. Yes, mm -hmm. yes, yes. You know, everybody, they pray for me. Y'all, you know, talk with little, little nuggets that y'all give, the, the Tuesday sermons, all of that stuff like that. With giving obedience, well, with making sure I am obedient, um, the blessings just have been, like, on a hundred. Just I down, huh? And I'm not just talking yeah. about, like, financial. I'm talking about... 
I mean, I, I was suicidal. I was, I'm probably military, so on, I did. Right. I was wow. PTSD. Wow. I, you know, I kind of suffered with that for a long time. So just coming out of those, like, that mindset, like, I, I have joy when I come to church. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I even changed my schedule so I could start coming back on Tuesday. Come on. You know that's that's real. That's what wow. you call I'm real. serious. Like, just, it's not, it's like internally I've also been blessed at the mm-hmm. church. You know, God, pastor say be obedient, uh, serve, give. And right. it's all come full circle. Yeah. Come it's been good. Man, that was a Crazy. blessing to hear your testimony yeah. earlier this morning. Like, yeah. how the Lord just blessed y'all with property. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like, four acres. Yeah. Look, I'm putting y'all business out there. <laughs> but public is praise. Yeah. Yeah. Also, the place, the rental place yeah. y'all got. Man, y'all got some big things, and then your husband got this T-shirt See, thing. It's I'm throwing it out there, this little T-shirt business. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, Kyle, it's even your son right. starting his Everybody, own business. Yep. Her whole family, kids. My kids are blessing. My daughter, everybody's her first job. Saved. Yeah, wow. like, she getting a check every look. Wow, out my pocket. <laughs> mm, that's so good. Just, like, I'm just throwing all your business out there. No, but look. that's fine. That's but that all comes with talking. obedience. Yeah. Exactly, obedience. Be obedient, and all your kids get saved. Like that's a big thing to me mm. too. You know, for my daughter and my kids to talk about God and and, and have reverence for the church and, yes. and y'all. You know what I mean? So. It's just, it's been a blessing, man. man and the security yeah. team, man. I love y'all. The More realest. y'all know. I can't make y'all understand. <laughs> the realest, yes. That's good. But then how awesome, real quick, how awesome yes. is it to hear Pastor talk about how as you're, as God is blessing mm-hmm. y'all to keep perspective. Right. And to hear him talk about how, yeah, you're blessed, but those things don't mean nothing don't mean compared nothing, to God. Right. Exactly. Isn't right. that so good to. In the balance in it. To balance. That, and that's. Has to keep you so humble, you know. Mm. Like when you get convicted, you be like, you know what I mean? Uh, <laughs> yeah. Gonna fix that, you yeah. know. You bless me, Lord, but Pastor be like, you know, you gotta fix that too, yeah. you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's like every every Tuesday, man, just getting the little things that I need to change about myself and yeah. the praying and all of the, how all y'all talking about praying. It was like God telling me I need to start praying more. That's what I'm saying. Just making sure that if you obedient and you listening to these sermons that on Sunday and on Tuesday, I That's promise it. you, your heart going to change. Yeah. And then Testify. from there, God starts blessing you. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's, yes. it's, it's, it's an internal thing and then all of the other things. Because, you know, you feel like you come from nothing. And then yeah. if, like, my mom passed, Deacon Dion, he saw, and they talked to my mom when we went to Dallas recently. And my mom was like, Lord, girl, you know, come a long way. But, you yeah. know, y'all don't know that side of me. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? So it's just like. It's but just, for her to see that, praise yeah. him. Yeah. Right, right, right. Man. That's good. Sky, we appreciate you coming here and Thank sharing you. Yeah, your that, testimony. I'm not coming up here no more. Uh-uh. No, no, no. <laughs> hey, if God plays something on your heart, I don't care if it's every Sunday. We, yeah, he going to want somebody to hear that. Yeah. Oh, thank you, my thank sister. You so bless much. y'all. God bless y'all. Man, That's B, awesome that was good, to hear. man. That's awesome to hear. All right. Praise All right. God. Let's see if I'm doing this. Good morning. What's going on, my brother? Good morning. Hey, you know what? We're going to change up some things. Can you interview us? <laughs> I mean, this is actually pretty interesting because I'm usually on y'all side. So. Right. What's How up, does Trey? it feel? What's going You're on, right, my dude. <laughs> You're right. You're usually on our side. You're right. Right. Man, okay, so introduce you know, yourself for those who's who out of state know. and don't know who you are. I know everybody know you out here. So um, introduce yourself, Trey. All right. So I'm Trey Francis. Yes. <laughs> Formerly on the worship team here yes. at Philadelphia Christian Church. Yes, yes, man. Um, also on KTC TV3. Yes. Yes. yes, and that's why I asked him to interview us because he usually asks the questions. That's, you but, hear it uh, in his voice. He's an interviewer. <laughs> yes, yeah. voice. So, yes, Trey, man, tell us a little bit about what yes. you got out of this word or what spoke yeah. to you the most. So this word was uh, definitely a blessing to me. Uh, I think learning about the adversary and all of his tricks and uh the word for me over this past week is just being obedient Uh, and the one i I wrote one word in my calendar for this week come on and that is to obey wow Wow. and that's why i'm here today wow Wow. because obedience is important yeah and that's that that's what it comes with you know Wow. You know, putting that pride aside and just yeah. being obedient to what God yes, has in, for, yes. in, in store for you. So yeah. it's also what I've been learning in my career. You know, mm-hmm. just, I, I, I know it's like me being obedient and just sticking with it as much as I want to quit, as much as I want to yeah. give up. Because mm-hmm. uh, it's that's tough. Good. It's hard out here in these streets, Ooh, you know. That's good. It you is. And, and that's a good thing because you're, you're always traveling. You're around. You see a lot of things. Uh, my question is, I bet you it's a challenge to be in this world. And to not be of it, like to be in places where you have to go there and do your job and to see and witness these things. Yeah. And then to come and still serve the Lord, I bet you it's a challenge, huh? It is. Um, Even like with this week, you know, 
I'm around so many different people, you yes. know, people who are racist, people who mm. are, you know, they have these qualities and these characteristics that they don't realize and they notice that they have. Mm. Mm. But I sit there and I talk to them, I'm like, wow. you're white, I'm black. We can sit down, we can be cordial, we can be yeah. peaceful, we can, we, we can hold hands with each other and we can pray with each other. And guess what? Yeah. We all have the same motive and that's to, to, to be one with each other and just to have mm -hmm. some type of understanding. Right. But we're all God's people and, uh, yeah. you know. Different perspectives. Huh? Yes. 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 But it's yes. good. Yes. You're Listening truly being a light. You're being a light in, you know, in a, in a system that, you know, Every, every system has its own agenda. That's right. You know, every job that we work, is, it's always something, but you're being a light, and, and yes. It's, yes. it's a blessing to see. Job, yes. yeah. And I think people are seeing that light, too. Every, yeah. every, wow. Everywhere that I go, you know, I just see the smiles on people's faces. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I, I catch people sometimes in their, their, their most distraught and hurt moments, you know. Wow. Their, their child might have just gotten killed the night before, and oh, I have wow. to go up to them, and I have to... The last thing they didn't want to do is talk to the media. Mm. But I tell people all the time to uh, not look at the media as the enemy all the time. Mm. Right, but right. if you sit there and you use uh, the media to your advantage, yeah. right, to get right, your right. word out, to get God's message out, to get uh, just, you know, the, you know, the, your, the your truth. Your, yeah. testimony, your, your story. truth. Your yeah. truth out. Right. Because people are going to put their truth out regardless. Right. Exactly. Exactly. If it's the truth or not. Come on. <laughs> That's right. You know. That's good. Come on, Trey. So, hey, you got you to gotta be able to use that to your advantage. Yes. That's Amen. Good. Amen. That's so well, good. Well, Trey, man, we appreciate having Always. you up here, bro. Oh, it's such a blessing. Y'all been doing it. Everything looks so nice. Come on. Man, come on, man. <laughs> hey, man, when the Lord opened up that schedule for you, man, you still got a space up here. Indeed. Praise Indeed. Him. Come on. You are my strength. Yeah. Train like no other. Come on, Come on Trey. Don't do it. You got them in their living room cutting up. Don't get me started here. <laughs> thank you, my brother. Yeah, Appreciate it, man. Love you, yeah. my brother. Keep doing your thing, man. Good seeing you, man. Yeah, take care. Looking forward to fellowship, fellowship and more. Yeah. Yes, yes. We'll yes. Get yeah. We got to get it. We got to get it. <laughs> All right, Trey. Man, that was a so blessing, man, to, to have from Trey. Trey, our former our former worship team member yeah. to come up here and share a few Bless words. The radio Hi. voice. So hey, good. Hey, what's up? I was about to say your name, but I'm going to let you say your name. Yes. Hi. Let me get a hug. Let me get a hug. Yes. Ms. Rock. Oh, love you. Love y'all too. Love y'all too. All right. Go ahead and introduce uh, yourself. Really? Uh, my name is Rosalind Landry. Okay. And um, How long I got chased out of Rock? church to get up here. So Come on. <laughs> come on. Okay. So <laughs> I, I'm, I'm, I'm obedient like Brother Trey. Look, you know? <laughs> we're family. We're comfortable yes, with yeah. and we good. Yes, sir. Make I feel, feel at home. home. This yes. is amazing. Uh, I started in 2018. Wow. You know, okay. so um, from Too a farmer longer. ministry. Mm. So um, I was being trained, you know, for, okay. you know, ministry and stuff okay. like that. So, but um, God has a different plan, you know. Mm -hmm. It's still the same plan, but a different plan. You, right. you think you're going to be with that same house, you know, for a long time. But when God wants to switch, mm -hmm. you have to just roll with him. So, yeah. But I yeah. love it here. I mean, everybody's amazing. And I'm an encourager. You know, mm -hmm. so yes, I love to encourage yeah, others. I love too. to build others because I was born to build, mm. yes. you know, and if I'm not building, I'm dying. Come I feel on. like I'm dying when I'm not encouraging others, you know, mm, and sometimes I need encouragement, you mm -hmm. know, yes. but most of all, I get the most joy. It's like I won a million dollars is when I'm encouraging yeah. others. That's good. Ooh, so are. I live to build, you know, mm. so good. I thank God for the opportunity that he has given me here. Uh, the word really spoke volumes on, to me talk about it. because I'm a living sacrifice. Mm. You know, so, so many people, it's hard for them to surrender. Right. But I've been in this for a while, so I'm seasoned. So I know that it's not easy for the youth. Mm. It's not easy for the young generation. Right. Uh, it's so much pulling them. Mm. Like pastors say, you know, they, yes. they deprogrammed us. Mm. You know, uh, we, I mean, they programmed us. Now we got to deprogram de right. from the world system. Yes. Because the world is, uh, is trying to get their uh, agenda, mm. their agenda, you know, into the youth. Yes. And the youth is the most precious because they're the future, the you know. Right. 
So, you know, I thank God for giving me the opportunity to pour into them, you know. Mm -hmm. I pray that they have attentiveness and alertness to hear what God has to say. Mm -hmm. And plant that seed to let them know that they are the future. They are the world yes. uh, president, the world leaders, yeah, you know. And right. they have to get themselves in position. Right. And in order to do that, you got to be whole. Yes. You know, you got to give up some things. Mm -hmm. You got to yeah. you got to keep yourself, you yeah. know. Uh, I've been kept for 26 years. I've been yeah. married. Uh, my marriage only lasted a year. So mm -hmm. I had a miscarriage in a mix of all wow. that. Wow. And then living for God for the rest of my life, him keeping me, you know, that's not easy. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, so I'm trying to give them an alternative to say, if you look at my life, it's possible for you to live pure unto the Lord until that's that so time. Good. You know, I don't want them giving up their gift. Yeah. It's a Come gift on. to right. be, you know, kept by the Lord. Right. Mm -hmm. I don't want them to give that up. You know, just uh, immaturely, because right. if you're not mature, that's not the way to go. Yeah. Right, you know, right. so good. I'm just trying to let them see purity is power. Yeah. Ooh. You know, the more you, you you pray and you seek God and you live for him, right. come to church, get the word fellowship. It's just all the elements of building a strong yes, house yes. for him. That's you know, good. that's right. So that's I'm right. trying to let them see the alternative is Christ. Yes. Yeah. You don't want to go any other way. Right. Because if you could get them at a younger age yeah. and just plant that seed of how yeah. important it is to offer their bodies mm -hmm. as a living, living sacrifice, sacrifice. then they're going to be able to change the world. That's Got so good. Right I mean, the world going to blow up. That's what? good. Because they're going to stand. If a youth is serving Christ, mm. they're going to stand no matter what. No right. matter what. And then they're going to be that light mm. yeah. and that salt. Like I told them, you can make people hungry yes. and thirsty for the true and living God. God. Amen. You, wanna, you don't want to do it the crowd is doing like no. pastors say everybody's going the other way yes stand out you're not called to fit in yes. i never could fit in i tried all i could to Come fit on. in yes god said i'm setting you apart yeah yes. and i didn't know the full reason you know right. we know in part we prophesy in part but only god reveals what's right. really going on in your life as you go mm. you know it's as you go right. so yeah. when i realized that i said well I'm not going to try to fit in anymore, mm. you know, because I'm called, I'm chosen, That's you know, good. I'm set apart. That means you can't do what other people are doing. Yes, you yes, got to yes. do something to make an impact. Yeah. Mm. And if we're not making an impact, we're dying also. Yeah. Right, right, we right. got to change the world. We we're change, change agents. Yes. Yeah. That's you know, we're change Ambassadors. agents. We, we're when we change. walk into a place, it changes. It's, we good. change the, the whole atmosphere. atmosphere shifts. Yes. Yeah. That's right. When we walk into a place, Ooh. if we only knew our power. I'm about to stand up mm. on this one. If we <laughs> only knew the power, power that we have us. it within yeah. us, we got the Holy Ghost on, on the inside of us. That's good. That's the change and, agent right there. And even as adults, yes. it's our job and our responsibility to uh, take the kids in and mentor them. Yeah. Because yes. a lot of yes. times, you know, we can't just depend. Parents are supposed to be the mentor. Yeah. But at the same time, you know, as the church, as the yes. body. We have to pour into them because we can't you. expect that parents would do that. Yeah. So we got to, you, you spoke a word. We're going to get back good. into the youth ministry. <laughs> that was oh, yes. good. I thank God I'm going to be thinking that. about you too. Yeah. yeah. Oh, the youth ministry. You. Ms. Ross, so we appreciate awesome. your testimony. I appreciate y'all. So Such and a blessing. And thank God for Philadelphia Christian Church. Yes. Praise them. You know, we have some wonderful shepherds, you know, yeah. and true shepherds. Yes. I've yes. been to different churches. Come on. But I know that this is a shepherd from the this Lord. Yes, so Lord. if we follow the mandate of what mm. God has given him to unify us, yes. you know, to uh, restore us and, and right. to awaken us, because I've been awakened, you know, yes. I was awakened, but I've been awakened even more. Thank you, Amen. Lord. You know, and knowing that I'm truly uh, Yah's uh, daughter, daughter right. that just blew my mind. Blew your mind. Yeah. You know, Oof. got me searching, researching just to learn more. Yeah. And yeah. That's what God does. That's so thank y'all for the opportunity. Thank you, thank so you Ms. Ross, for coming up. Appreciate it. God bless y'all. God bless you too, my sister. Thank you. Might that was to, so good. And I love how she talked about the youth. I know Pastor Ooh. had mentioned something about how the devil is patient and Ooh. he'll wait. He'll yep. wait a generation if he has to. He'll yeah. wait until, you know, the, the spirit dies down in a people to right. come in and infiltrate and, and set his agenda and that's set right. his plans. So that's good. We need to make Ooh. sure that we're focused on, on our young people and that's focused right. on, on getting them to be um, trained up in the word right. so they won't depart from it. Right. Definitely. Definitely. Yeah. What's going Hello. on? Good evening. Uh -oh. How's it going today, sir? <laughs> Doing great. Awesome. 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 Good morning, good morning, my How sister. How you doing? 
So Linda and George Chesterfield, we from Baton Rouge. Mm -hmm. we, do yeah. we make the trip almost every Sunday. Come on, man. But man, Faithfully. we were just so blown away um, about the message and how things have been so subtle. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, we've been a, around life a little bit a while. And right, right. He can, that's what he made a mention, that the things that we seen way back then, not way back then, but a few years ago. Mm -hmm. Right, right. This doesn't make a sense now. Mm -hmm. For his dress wise, mm -hmm. and for his the way that they think for his family wise, you yeah. know. Mm -hmm. uh, back then, I got married in 1979. Okay. And that wasn't yesterday, but yeah, to right, me, it right. feel like it was yesterday. Hey, come on, hey. <laughs> <laughs> and it's, it's it's just such a big difference. It's so subtle. The, even he mentioned the word Vanity Fair, mm -hmm. and I didn't know what that meant. Right. Then, but there was a furniture store in Baton Rouge that named Vanity. Oh, wow. wow. Yeah, and certain things that were so subtle back then, like even the uh, series Be Bewitched. Mm -hmm. I, I uh, talked to a guy um, who gave me a tape from a guy named Mike Roincreek. He was a devil worshiper, but wow. got saved. And he said how he learned that those things watching Bewitched. He mm -hmm. said he listened wow. to those incantations and those words and went to the library and looked the words up. Wow. So it's so subtle out yeah. there, you know. The that. world is so subtle. Mm -hmm. Smooth yeah, it. yeah. So, in mm. the, in, and how was in Elberson's day for yesterday? And they got Halloween stuff out already. And this is August. Mm -hmm. Wow, wow, yep. man. You know, um, my and they're consistent with it too. Yeah. Well, mm. praises be to the God, to Amen. the Lord. But it's just a blessing. Mm. But things have changed. And things are subtle, mm -hmm. and the things that we are in the world, but not of the world. Praise That's them. right. And as we go about our daily task, and as you look around and see how things are changing, and being in the school system, I've always kept a Bible on my desk, mm -hmm. and the kids always saw me when I read a devotion or a scripture. I've always talked about the Lord, because a lot of them never knew, didn't go to church yeah. Parents didn't take them to church, but I've always instilled in them that God right. is able to do anything but fail. That's good. Even when you took a test, getting ready for the test, I told them nothing is impossible for God. Yeah. If you just trust and believe that all things are possible. Yeah. And if, for, <laughs> this is one example I'm going to give you. A child had failed to, to take, mm, he tried to pass this test to graduate two or three times. And I came into the room and I said, look, we're going to pray. If he passed this test, mm -hmm. and I said, who all go to church? And everybody raised their hand. I said, what's your pastor's name? He couldn't tell me. I said, mm. you, you sit down. Mm. That means you don't go to church. If Come you don't on. know your pastor's yeah. name, right. you're not attending anybody's <laughs> church. Right. Just right. have a seat. But we all got together and got in a circle and prayed that this child would pass this test. And glory be to God, he passed at that Come time on. and was Amen. able to graduate. Wow. So I know the power of prayer. Yeah. But it's just the idea, the little things that when you're in school, you can't say nothing they stopped praying in school they yeah. took prayer out of school wow. and they are anti-christ they are yeah. anti-bible right and right what pastor was saying it is changing and when my mother grew up she said church and school was at church yeah. when they grew up they had when you went to church school was the church house right, right. that's where they learned everything about god and god was first mm -hmm. so it's so important yeah. that the things that they're not putting in the textbook they're not talking about god they don't want to know about God. Hmm. But I thank God that he is our source. He is. And I do want the red pill. I do want my eyes open. Come on. I don't yeah. want to walk in that broad mm. road. That's good. Because right. it's full. Yeah. My grandfather used to always say, on that narrow path, every now and then, you will see a pilgrim traveling down that narrow yeah. path. And mm. he would always say, those who you think are in heaven won't be there. Come on. The wow. ones you think are going to heaven, they won't be there. But the wow. ones you least think will be there. Come on. So be mindful yes. how you treat strangers because you may good. be entertaining an angel. Come so on. So it's always good to know, hallelujah, to serve a truth and a, and a living God. Because like mm. pastors say, the world has entered the church. Mm. Yeah. And you have to discern and know the difference. Yeah. Because the spirit recognizes the, the spirit. spirit of God. Yes. Yes. Hallelujah. Real recognize real. And you yeah. know real is real. Yes. And when right. I look and I discern, that's what I tell people, you ought to be blessed and have that spirit of discernment. You ought to know. Mm. Hallelujah. You know Help your sisters us. and brothers in Christ. Yes. yes. Hallelujah. Yes. When I go to work and people say, they're having an issue, Chess, would you just come and pray with us? Mm. Because they recognize your spirit. 
-hmm. And they say, oh, she can reach heaven. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Come on, man. I thank God for that. And they can recognize that. Oh, yeah, talk to her. And people say, I love talking to her. Yeah. But she says, it's not about me, baby. It's about him. It's yeah. about him. So I'm just Amen. an instrument Amen. to be Amen. used Come on. by him. That's on the, mo the most high God. The most high and I just thank God for to that. To be salt. Yeah. And I just love. And they said, you travel all the way to left here? I said, where the word is and where I can get, oh, baby, I'm going. Come on. It look, does not matter. It doesn't matter. Because in the Bible matter. days, they were traveling miles, miles. Yeah. to I'm come hear that word. to get a word from the Lord. Yeah. And that's even no air conditioning. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> they was come coming to get that word. Come on. And so, look, that's, that's, that's our jobs as, yeah. as, as uh, believers is to be salt and light in this world because especially like to the younger generation, mm -hmm. they're watching us. Yeah. yeah. You don't realize yeah. that. They they're are. watching they're us. They're paying attention and to And actions yeah. speak louder than words. Yes. They see how we live in, how mm -hmm. we how we speak into one another. Mm -hmm. And we live in a world where it's so easy to be distracted. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Very much so. Even by good things. That's things good. that God blesses us with. Yeah. yeah. Can be then an idol. Yeah. Or it can be something we're chasing after when God really just wants us to be separated and yeah. to yeah. thank Him for it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, tell people that. You're man, in the world, but not of it. Right. that's right. And you have to recognize. You think you're recognize. doing right, and sometimes you're doing wrong. That's why we gotta examine ourselves yeah. Yeah. Daily. Daily. and renew this mind yeah. on a constant basis. Mm -hmm. yeah. Hallelujah. Transform yeah. our minds, man. It's we so thank good. y'all so much. We, we can have a so oh, yeah. preaching <laughs> sermon right here. <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Praise brother. Hallelujah. <laughs> Thank you all so much for sharing your testimony you. and, you. and everything y'all witnessed the Lord did in y'all life. Man, that's amazing, man. Amen. So uh, y'all have a great day. And y'all have a safe trip back to BR, right? Yes. That's it, back to the room. Yes. That's right. That's right. Praise God. That was good, man. Oh, good. Woo. Praise God. Good turnout. Great yeah. testimonies. Great. Yeah. Man, just, just explaining how this world man this world can truly be mm, it's very important that we really like I said examine ourselves to make yeah. sure we in the faith to make sure we doing what God called us to do because I can see how it can be a distraction because mm -hmm. uh, we can get so busy in life so caught up in things and not really see ourselves or see if we're doing you know what I'm saying catching on or acting like or whatever yeah. so I think it's very important to really like um get deep into that word man and really ask God what is it yeah in my life that might be worldly that I need to tighten up on right. so and it's something that's definitely in the spirit right now uh like I said I just was watching a, a TikTok of somebody that was saying you know they put a little song and they're like man I love the world but I, I love the Lord too like he you know going yeah. back and forth about how he yeah and it's like people are really struggling with this stuff and it's something that needs to be talked about. It's something right. that, that needs to be exposed so that yes. uh, we can see what what is God's way right. and what's right. the world's way and how there there shouldn't be an in-between. We shouldn't be straddling the fences right. one or the other. Right. So praise God for that's Pastor so talking true. about this. So true. And it's crazy because sometimes that's, that's a lot of outward things. But I, I believe even as believers, we can be worldly behind the scene come on because sometimes we can put a front in front of people and yeah you can look like you got everything dressed you you were out you're modest you got yeah. everything together but then when you get home all you do is gossip about come people on. and that's worldly come you on. get home and all you do is talk about this or you do that that's or good. you have bitterness and pride towards one another that's, that's good. worldly that's good but we come to church and cover it up mm. and act like you know what i'm saying Help us. i'm perfect yeah. so it goes deeper than just the outward appearance yes. of worldly. It goes to the heart. Yeah. Examine our hearts to see if we're acting worldly, if we're speaking like the world, mm. if we're desiring the things that the world desire, and, 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 discern, and we get discernment mixed up with desire. You know Come what I'm on. saying? The greatest enemy of discernment is desire. Come on. We want to, we desiring these things, but is it really what God is yeah. showing us? Yeah. So we can go on and on. This word was really good. Very Thank y'all for tuning in. Moment of reflection, reflecting on people's testimony, on what they got, on the word. Pastor, you did a great job. Awesome, as always. Awesome word, as always. He's on fire. You know, we're going to continue to lift him up. Mm -hmm. Family, continue to lift our pastor up, his family, and the church. Yeah. And
for him not holding back anything, not sugarcoating anything, Thank you. but keeping it real, keeping it true. Father God, using them to speak, thus said, speak the word of the Lord. We just pray that as we leave and we go about our day today, that you will continue to be with us, protect us, guide us. Let this word not go on deaf ears, but yeah. let us be doers of the word. Let us truly, Lord God, seek you more. Let us, Lord God, live for you more. Let our lives be a, a, a walking testimony, a, a living sacrifice, Lord God. We just want to glorify you and make you smile. Yeah. So bless us during this week. We just pray that everywhere we go would be blessed. Everything we touch be blessed. Keep us, shine your face upon us. We give you all the glory, Lord God, for being so good. So, Father God, we thank you for this time. Thank you for what you're doing in our life. Yeah. And we say all these things in Jesus', Jesus name. name. Amen. 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 We out. Thank you all so much. Love you all. God bless you all. Blessings. Shalom.